I kind of feel like William Shatner when he speaks. Maybe Christopher Walken. <laughs> it's so stupid. I don't know, you turn different when you do YouTube. All right, so here we are underneath the net. Promised you guys I'll videotape how to take this bad boy down. So here's the reason why it's very old net. <laughs> Awful patching jobs, but they're there. There are patches everywhere. Those, these are better. These are the way you're supposed to patch it. I just did quick jobs. Let's see if I can see it there. Hey, see, you can't even see the, you can't even see the job the patch let's see this way this way and there's a patch I believe right there you can't even see it these I did on the pinch but forget it they're not gonna hold much longer and they're just awful and they just kept tearing and tearing and tearing and then when my big butt comes in well it's gonna tear more so time to retire this net now that's called an apron up there there's one on this side and there's one on that side those aprons they're good for a much much longer time so we're gonna reuse those when we make the new net. So for now, let's go ahead and put you guys in a decent spot and show you how I take this thing down and how I put up the other one. Help, it was really tight on this side. So to help aid the process, I went and just loosened up the net on that end over there. There's a bunch of different ways to do the same thing. I like taking the aprons down first, then I'll take out the spreaders. All right, aprons down. Let's show you how we undo the, let's show you how we undo the knots. All right, so, what, you normally, what I normally do on the stakes is a clove hitch. Here we do a bowline. Uh, up top, if you notice, this is the other end, it doesn't go. We have a knot that was pre-measured to and put up there so we don't lose this one. Now, if I let this one go, we lose it. So these get tied together. Taking off bowline and clove hitches are relatively easy, which is why I love them. <laughs> Watch me not be able to take this bowline off now. Uh, they are friction knots so ease off the tension or the friction and they came off they come off relatively easily now this one I will lose so I'll take them both give them a little tie together nothing crazy just so I don't lose it all right out of there. So I massage it, take the tension off. Once you take the tension off, you can start feeding uh, one end of the rope. Use the rope case. It's like if it's taking the rope off, it's easy. Just gotta take the tension off. There's your bowline. Again, there's the apron fully down. This one, I can't lose it. This one, I can. So we'll tie them together so we do not lose it for any reason because. Going up 30 feet, it's just not fun. Let's see if I can show you. How do I get up there 30 feet in the air and no net underneath? Yeah, that's not fun. So I'd, I'd have to take this tower down and being by myself, which I've done it by myself, it's just not fun. So that's the thing about friction knots. I do that a lot, don't I? I don't know why. I just noticed I started to do that when I started doing YouTube. So anyways, that's the thing about friction knots. You gotta massage it. Take the tension off. It's a friction knot. Clove hitches, by far the best hitches. Or they're not knots, they're hitches. Uh, I use, use it for everything. All right, let's go do the other side. All right. 
This is not too tight. It's actually loose enough for me to do it, but I'll show you how this works. These uh, come-alongs, they vary, but they're basically the same thing. As it so happens every time, the lines for the harness are still on the net. I'm like, what's holding this net up? The lines. So up top I go. I'll say it again. If you've never done this before, be careful. Being up there, you'll get vertigo. Now, I'm used to it. I don't feel anything. I can look down, it doesn't do anything to me. But I've been doing it for many, many years. So be careful. But it's gonna be a very long year for you. Apron, we've done the back apron. Now it's time to do the middle. He's called the spreader. Let's do that. I kind of feel like William Shatner when he speaks. Maybe Christopher Walken. <laughs> it's so stupid. I don't know, you turn different when you do YouTube. These are like plumber's channel locks, I guess. I think that's what they're called. Um, whatever pliers you have, you don't need much. It's not like these don't get tightened really hard. These just get tiny enough so there's some friction in, in it. So, because just the tension of the, of the come alongs is enough to hold these uh, shackles in. But it's good to tension them up on a twist a little bit more than your hand. And then the, the tension of the come along and pulling and the spreaders themselves does rust. I swear I talk like a completely different person when I'm on camera. Oh there goes the other one. Not really. Alright so those are the spreaders. Now let's do the really hard part. Okay and we're back. So uh, next is corner poles. Back half is done. Let's go to the front half. Voila, net is down. How crazy does that look? All right, let's keep going. Now, because we're here, let's go ahead and do this side, tidy this up. myself out I left it connected on the far end which is the back end now we're gonna go over there from here we're gonna take this left side flip it just past the middle we're gonna take 
the right side, flip it just past the middle. Then we can start rolling it up. That took me about an hour and a half to take down. Longer, because I took some breaks. Made some phone calls. For your time. Hopefully this is only like eight minutes in, because I'll fast forward and all that. Let's go show you where I keep the other net. Pretty much got it there. We're on the home stretch, as far as the fun stuff goes. I promise you I'll show you a bowline. It's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be easy. I'm doing it upside down. All right. Yeah. Then <clears throat> you can do it to the front or you can do it to the back. Meaning this is your working, it's your anchor. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use different terminology. Left hand, right hand. You can see the right hand is the majority of the rope, right? Now, I make my loop 
So when it comes, see how you bring them both together? The longest part of the rope is coils over top. And there has to be specific. You can do it if it coils from the back. It really doesn't matter. I do it both ways. But I'm gonna show you from the front because everybody shows you from the back. Now, your working rope, the small one, goes through the rabbit hole. <laughs> yep, that's how I was taught. Around the front of the tree, which is this long rope, and then back up the rabbit hole. And that is a bowline from the front part of the coil. That will hold. If somebody falls into that, which they have, especially the pros. The pros go into the apron more than anybody else because they're the ones taking the biggest chances. So you want to make sure that's a good bowline. Friction knot. Works every time. I'm going to show you the clove hitch. I think it's called the clove hitch. It's a hitch. Two different ways of doing the exact same hitch. This is the exact same hitch. I'm gonna show you one way, right here. You gotta imagine, I know I got some cables here. Uh, imagine just one cable, that's all you need. Take one end of your working rope, the work, rope you're working with, you have this whole cable, take it over top. Go to one side. See that? Now, let me take it back. I like to go from the bottom. No, oh, that was right. Because the rope is wants to pull that way, so this is this would be the bottom. But anyway, go to one side. Use your long rope. Use your short side. You go over top, through back to you from one side of the long rope. Boom. Then you take the other one from the bottom side. Pull that through and you get yourself a clove hitch now you're not expected to get this off of this video you can youtube all this stuff and those show there are people out there who show you better ways of doing it but between the bow line that i just showed you and the clove hitch those are basically the only two knots i use for everything there are better knots for different situations learn them for your particular situation for mine good enough now the other way to do it if you have an open if you look down there that stake there's an open stake. So let me pull this as much as I can. Bring it all the way up. I'm gonna come back here. Hopefully you guys can see this because I know I'm behind the trees here. I've got my left hand pulling, the right hand is gonna be the working hand. Left hand I call the anchor. Now I take it and I coil underneath. And I put that on and I can pull that now. Now I got a better anchor there. I know you can't see me. Hopefully you can see that. Again, there's not a tutorial on how to do flow pitches. I hold it. I coil again underneath. I pull and hold it. That's all I need. That there. That there is enough to hold everything. So I'm going to leave it there. Wrap it around once for some friction. Wrap it around twice. And then just one more time for good measure. I did it was wrapped around. Then I secure this out of the way so when I cut the grass, I don't have to run, I'm not running over my lines. It's gone smoothly up to now, but it's not. It looks good. My spreaders are my problem. Let me see if I can deal with it later.
you have it. All I have left is the spreaders, which is my major problem. They don't align. So I gotta figure that out. I'm gonna put it up just so you see it, and then that'll be it. Time to repound steaks. I'm gonna take a break and do that. But I'm gonna end this here. The net is up. Took one down, put one up. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you.